Now this one's a little bit easier to project into the future than if we were using a double declining method because we would expect we, we would expect the second month to be a full year straight line method, which was 170,000 divided by 25 27.5 and we could see if I go to year 2, year 2 is at that 6181. So that's pretty easy to kind of project out into the future easier than, you know, the double declining uh, methods to do that. There's no depreciation on the land. Now note that if you're if you're taking out a new client or something and they have rental property, this schedule might not always be attached, you know, to the return. You're going to need the schedule so that you can get the rental property on the books uh, correctly. So if you have rental property, I would highly recommend that if you have a new client, what you would like to do is is populate this stuff into the system as of the prior year so that you can then roll it over into the current year and make sure your, your depreciation schedules are populated properly and match the prior year and so that they should roll over to the current year uh, easily. Now, obviously the depreciation will continue until all of the 170,000 has been consumed uh, with, with in depreciation. We've allocated it all out. We've got a tax benefit from it because we, we got a deduction for the depreciation expense over the 27.5 years. And after that point in time, then if I go to like 2023, you can see part of it has been depreciated in the prior year. That means the basis in the property from a balance sheet standpoint is 170,000 minus the 5409 minus the 6181, right? And that depreci and that's the depreciated part uh, that has not yet been depreciated that represents current tax benefit uh, into the future that we're going to be getting into the future either in the form of depreciation or if we dispose of the property then when we sell it that that the, we're going to take the sales price minus this basically adjusted basis in the property including also including the land so in other words we we would like to have the adjust we would like to get the expense as soon as possible so we would like to write off the whole 200,000 this year, oftentimes if we could, but they won't let us. We have to put it on the books as an asset, run the depreciation schedules. Then we would like to have the depreciation life as short as possible so I can get the depreciation as early and I'd like to have an accelerated depreciation method if we could, but in general, they won't let us with the land. We have to put it pretty long life, 27.5, and then uh, the straight line method. Now. The 170,000 higher basis is usually good. We want the high basis uh, for for the because that represents tax benefit into the future. The lower the basis goes, it's good when we lower it because we're getting a tax benefit. We're lowering the basis, getting a tax benefit. But the lower the basis is, when I sell it, that means that we're going to have we're going to have a gain. More likely to have a gain. Gains are bad for taxes because it's income or we're likely to have less of a loss. Losses are actually good for taxes because we might be able to reduce, you know, other income, you know, with the loss. So that's the general idea. Now, the other thing is that's common is that we might have improvements. If we have improvements in the property, you would expect you, you might say, hey, I would like to just expense them like as repairs, like the common roof example, where I'd say, hey, let me just expense the whole roof that I put in place right here. But then if you replace the whole roof, they're going to say, well, no, it's an improvement. Well, if it's an improvement, then I've got to put it on the books, possibly as an asset. Asset acquisition. Enemy agent disposal. And, I, and I, if it's an improvement, I, I might have to depreciate it over the, the same, in essence, useful life uh, as if the real estate was put in place at, at this point in time, the 27.5 years. Now, note that, that some situations could come up if you're putting in stuff like a like a heating system or something like that and you're like well maybe it's if it's not permanently attached to the home or something like that maybe i can call it not an improvement and if i can't if i can't just call it a repair and depreciate it i would like to depreciate it over five or seven years as opposed to 27.5 years that would be more beneficial so you run into these kind of problems as well right i would like to record it as a repair so i can get the expense now if they won't let me record it as a repair, do I have to depreciate it over 27.5 years straight line 
method or can I can I somehow get it categorized as five year, seven year property so I can have an accelerated depreciation method at least or even better take a 179 deduction or a, a, a special depreciation allowing me to take it you know sooner would be the the idea but if it's a standard improvement we, we'd say and usually the improvements are going to happen not in the same year that we purchased the home but let's say we had an improvement so in, improve mints and again you probably want to be a lot more specific you would on your descriptions to, so you know exactly what the improvement was so that at a future time when you when you sell the home or something you can figure out your adjusted basis for the sales price which will typically be the house the land the improvements and you can back up those improvements because you can go and find you know the the documentation of the improvements that were put in place so we're going to say this is going to be going to schedule e as well this is going to be for improvements so i'm going to say it was 11 15 22 15 000, and i'm going to use that makers uh, 27.5 year straight line which is the same method as with uh the house so now if i pull back on over we've got that populating here if i go to my 2022 depreciation schedules we now have another category with the improvements so the improvements here calculating another 68 dollars you can see how how much the improvement is reduced because the 15,000 a fairly significant dollar amount if i got to expense it in the current year uh would be would be fifteen thousand dollars versus if i have to expense it over 27.5 years significantly less 68 dollars over 27.5 years which will still add up to the 15,000 but i have to wait a lot longer to do that versus if i was able to categorize it somewhere else or populate it in 179 deduction or a special where i would get more of it up front in those cases or if i can populate it somewhere other than you know the 27.5 year property like a five year or seven year i would get an accelerated method possibly double declining or something like that and be able to depreciate it not over 27.5 years so you can see the incentives from a taxpayer perspective i would like to not have to capitalize it not put it on the books as an asset take the fifteen thousand as an expense repairs or something if i could or get a 179 deduction or special which would basically have a similar effect or uh, have a lower life and an accelerated depreciation double declining if i could or seven or five years and then and and rather than having a longer life with a straight line kind of method would be the general thought process but obviously the tax code is going to restrict us now also remember that we might have had a loan on the property right if i had a loan on the property and had uh, points on the loan so I, if i go over here i would expect if i had the rental property that i would have a, a loan on it and you would expect for me to get a statement for the interest statement right so I'm, i would have mortgage interest not going to schedule a but rather being being an expense here so let's say we had interest mortgage interest and let's say it was it was you know thirteen thousand or something like that but we might also have points that we discussed a little bit uh, in a prior presentation which are kind of we can think of them as basically the advanced advanced payment uh, of interest so so we, we should get to deduct the interest then but the fact that it's advanced the IRS doesn't like those those advanced payments they think you're taking advantage of taking the deduction sooner rather than later so we might have to put the points on the books which again really only happens when you first buy the property or something or take out the loan so you might have to depreciate basically points and the general idea with the points would be that uh you let's take let's go to the depreciation schedule if that was to happen you're going to say all right got to depreciate the points so let's add another one and then points you probably want to be you would want to be quite specific on the loan and possibly the last four digits of the loan number so you know which points you're talking about where it's tying to so if you sell the property or refinance you can properly deal with the points at that point in time 